Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we started up the year one season simulation. As you can see we only went to November the 27th because of the RFA deadline. Um, apparently the RFA deadline doesn't even uh, like activate in this game right now still so um, it doesn't really matter that we paused around here but we are going to be making a couple trades for some RFAs in this episode just to kind of get our team a bit more younger and getting rid of those old guys that we're not going to be keeping around for much longer. So the first trade was one that we were offered in last episode. I will get to it in a sec but first we have a few comments. Uh, the first comment is from my buddy Sir Sink. He says, definitely keep Cider in the NHL as his role is a top 60 man, and he needs to play his role to cr uh, grow correctly, which I totally agree with. He also says, also, I think in order to get a top 5 pick, you're going to need to trade Thomas Grice, as he's performing way too good for a bottom feeder team. So we will probably have to um, trade Thomas Grice. I think we're going to trade him closer to the trade deadline. Um, like I will like this episode will probably end right before the deadline like a couple of days beforehand And then you guys can suggest me any trades for the deadline So Thomas Grice who we could go after with him because he should have a decent amount of trade value considering how good he's been playing And then also uh, eat the Ethan bear trade he was mentioning He said as for the bear trade definitely trade for him in the future He should be able to number two right-handed defenseman behind Mord Sider, which would be a huge improvement over John Merrill so I think that will make sense, so we're going to be definitely doing that trade. And then we also have another comment from Cam Wilson who says, Valeno, Lurkin, Mantha, Sider, Raymond, Zadina, and is another sung, uh, solid young defensive prospect, and you're good to form that team around. So pretty much we have a pretty good prospect pool already, but once we add like some good solid young defensemen in, we're going to be a good team probably in a few years. Um, also, I would say we would need a goalie unless Jan Bednar becomes that goalie. I don't know. So, that is our comments. If you guys want to see your comments in the videos, make sure to comment down below for suggestions. And I will throw up a couple of them at the beginning of each episode. So, anyways, let's get into those trades that we're going to make. So, the first one, like I just said, you guys would have known because we got offered it in the last episode. I tried it off camera and it seems like the Edmonton Oilers won a bit more but we're gonna still try it anyways so currently Ethan Bear is unsigned so we're gonna have to also sign him to a contract so as you can see RFA top 4 82 overall at 23 and we're probably gonna sign him to a multi-year deal like he's only 23 maybe sign him to have like a five-year deal which might be a bit too long term but we could always flip him and right-handed defensemen, especially ones that are offensive defensemen like Ethan Bear is, are hard to find. So we're going to trade for him, and we're going to give up John Merrill, who's the big piece going back. Even though John Merrill is only signed for one year, and he's not making much more than Ethan Bear would, um, we're still going to do this deal. And then we're going to also be giving them our fifth round pick because that's what they wanted. If they reject, I would be willing to go up to like a fourth round pick or maybe even using Vegas's third because Vegas's third is probably going to be a late third rounder. So let's do the fifth round pick and see if that goes through. So John Merrill in our fifth in this year's draft for Ethan Bear will that go through? And that is accepted. What? That's funny. <laughs> that uh, actual like reply to it. Why not just accept our proposal when Edmonton set this exact, exact same deal to you a few days ago? Whatever, it's a good deal still, and we'll play along. That's actually kind of funny because literally it was a few days ago that we got offered that trade. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't accept it then because I wanted your guys' opinions on it first because, yeah, it makes more sense that way. Wait, was Bear sent to the Miners? No, he wasn't. Okay, we could just uh, go to our edit lines quickly and throw in Ethan Bear where John Merrill was. I might do some line changes to this afterwards depending on how he fits on our top pairing. Uh, he's actually not there. Where the heck is he? Oh, yeah, he's unsigned currently at the moment. That's why. So at the moment, we'll just throw in somebody like Mark Stahl. So we'll have to go sign him after we make our next trade. Because then this next trade I actually uh, found on the block, and I think it actually would be a pretty good deal to do, is to bring in Felipe Myers. He's another RFA to trade for. He's an 81 overall, and he's listed as a top six defenseman. So his potential is not, or his potential is not great, but his trade value is pretty low 
for somebody like that. Like that's a pretty good top six defenseman. He's also got some pretty good stats. Like defensively, he's pretty solid. So I think this is a solid trade as well. He's also another right-handed defenseman. So we will trade for him. And I don't remember what the AI wanted. You know, I'm gonna go uh, off. Go to uh, what is it? Uh, the trade finder and see what they wanted again. Because I think they wanted Danny De Kaiser, which I'm definitely willing to part with Danny De Kaiser considering uh, Danny DeKaiser's contract is up at the end of next season. So, eh, it wasn't Edmonton, goddammit. I just have to go to the defenseman anyways. So, we will go to Philadelphia, and we will take Felipe Myers. What do you want? Let's see what they want. A third in Nemeth. I could do that too, potentially, but then I'd have to scratch like somebody on our defense. Or DeKaiser in a fourth. I think that the Kaiser in the fourth one makes more sense personally because even though Nemeth is getting paid 3.5 to sit on the bench, I think the Kaiser like getting paid for two years, he's gonna drop off a lot more, and the fourth round picks a late fourth rounder instead of giving up a third. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this trade. Felipe Myers, welcome to the team, and good luck in Philadelphia, Danny De Kaiser. Maybe he goes for a Stanley Cup this year. Okay, so that trade is good. Now we need to go sign those guys. But we need to go to edit lines quickly and throw in our other defenseman, and that is Patrick Nemeth. So we'll just throw him in for the time being. Okay, so let's go uh, sign those guys now to some contracts. It'll take a few days before they actually accept, which is going to be kind of annoying, but they should accept right away because they have been RFAs for more than half the season, well, not more than half the season, like a quarter of the season. So our first one we got from the Edmonton Oilers is Ethan Bear, who is oh, an RFA. How much is he wanting? I think I already looked before. One year at 207, yeah, he wants actually quite a bit, but I'm going to give him a five-year deal because he doesn't want much more at five years. I think this is pretty good contract if he sims well. If not, we could always trade him away, but let's give him... I People are going to say I'm probably overpaying for him, but let's give him five years at 3.6. I think that should be good. And then we're also going to sign Felipe Myers, I think also to a five-year deal. Yeah, he wants barely anything for five years, and he's a pretty solid top six. He could end up being a top four at the, like at the best. We'll give him 1.7. Maybe that will work. Okay, so those are the two guys we're offering for. Let's advance a few days in the simulation, see if we get them. And then, yeah, we'll start simming up to the deadline-ish. And then, like I said, next episode will be the actual deadline. So you guys have to give me suggestions for, like, what we should be listing a team as, like a seller, a conservative seller, that type of thing. Okay, so let's go right to the first. We only have one game that Ethan Barron stuff won't be in the lineup for, so that should be fine. And Ethan Bear is accepted, and Myers is rejected. You have chosen to make some changes there. Okay, so I'm going to offer him a new contract. I don't know why he's being a bit of a douche about it. It's like December the 1st, and he has yet to play a single game. But we will throw in Ethan Bear once we get uh, this offer sent to uh, Felipe Myers. Come on, Phil. you got to accept that, man. It's a 5 years deal. Why does it tell me only to view profile? Oh no, it passed December the 1st now. I, I can't sign Phil Myers. Are you serious? The actual RFA deadline is actually working now. I can't sign him. Well, that was kind of a... Mm, is he going to be at RFA next year? Well, it looks like we're going to have to wait a year before we can actually play Felipe Myers. Because now he's been a douche. We could always turn him away, but I'm not going to do that. I think he's a good fit, but I don't know why. Like, they actually do take into account the RFA deadline. Apparently, uh, some people are telling me they don't, but damn, that blows. Okay, so I guess we're going to have to play like Patrick Nemeth, which is not a bad problem. But, uh, yeah, we don't get to play Phil Myers this year. At least that gives him time to uh, not have his plus minus hurt because of how bad our team is. So we're going to take out Mark Stahl, and we are going to put in... Wait, did I even call him up? No, I didn't call him up yet. I have to call him up still. Because I guess he gets all assigned to an AHL. Yes, he does. 
I actually wouldn't mind Taro Hirose being in the NHL as well, but I don't know where I'm going to slot him in. Hmm. I mean, I could always make Gagne a depth forward. How much points has he put up this season? Five points. Only a minus one, though, which is not bad. Because I think Chero Hirose is way too good for the AHL. But he's actually simulating really well down there, so I think I'm just going to leave him down there. That way, at least he still has a good season sim. Because or else his plus minus is probably going to be really bad. Because he's not as good of a defensive player, I don't think, as somebody like uh, Gagne is. We're going to take Mark Stahl out of this team. And we are going to put in Ethan Barron. Okay, so we kind of got to split up Ethan Barron and Heronic. We could go with Nemeth up there, which is fine. Something like this. And then Chalowski, no, Cider. Yeah, I guess we can play Cider already on the top four, even though that might stunt his growth a bit. Because then you got a two-way defender. Yeah, our, our uh, what is it? Our chemistry is not as good, but uh, I think I'm fine with it. And then scratch-wise, Nielsen at stall. Yeah, that works. Okay. Okay. So let's continue to sim. Sucks that uh, they actually do have the deadline kind of thingy, though, for, for uh, RFAs, because <laughs> now I just traded for some guy that's not even going to make an impact right away. But we're going to sign him in the offseason probably to a multi-year deal because I think he should be a pretty good top six for us. It's a good trade for the future, but right now we're just going to probably plummet down in the standings. So let's go to January the 1st. Like I said, we're going to go to the, just before the deadline, so around, I think it's in March. And Dominic Turgeon's got post-concussion syndrome. That that, that matters because he's an AHLer. He's probably one of our better AHLers, I would assume. But then again, our AHL team is pretty stacked. We're winning a couple games here, which is good. We're winning way too much games now all of a sudden. Okay, I don't want to necessarily make the playoffs. So, yeah, guys, just don't win too much games. There's a win over Philadelphia, so we beat Danny DeKaiser's team. Why are we winning so much? Is Ethan Bear helping us out that much? <laughs> or is Thomas Grace just too good for us? A third in Gagne for a third. Now, that one would be probably moving up a couple spots only to give up Gagne, but I'm not going to do it yet. Might be something we do towards the deadline is move Gagne because then we could call it Perose. There's like Rasmussen as well down there in the HL. There's a lot of guys we could move up into the NHL if we make some trades. I don't think Valeno was injured down there, was he? No, he wasn't. Like Joe Valeno is almost a fourth liner, which is good. And we're above 500, which is really not that good. I don't know if Ethan Bear is simulating really well. Larkin's got 37 points. Let's just take a quick look at how Ethan Bears done in terms of our lineup. Because hopefully he's been pretty good. Uh, let's see. Wow, a cider jump to an 82. Wow, okay. And Ethan Bears got 8 points in 16 games, so and a plus 12. Wow. So that was a pretty good pickup. I know a lot of you are probably going to think I was copying 2BC by picking him up because I think 2BC picked him up as well, but damn. Ethan Bear did really well so far. And then Ward Sider beside him has got 9 points. He's a minus 4, but he's now listed as a top 4, so he's growing pretty quick. Him and Ethan Bear might be, well, I don't know if they'd be a pairing together, because Sider would probably be the number 1, unless Heronic wants to keep on growing. I don't know if he will, though. But yeah, our defense is actually simulating pretty decently, especially Bear. He might have been a too good of a pickup to bring in. I wonder how Felipe Myers would have simulated, though, if we would have uh, actually been able to sign him on time. I should have offered him a bit more. I forgot the deadline was up, like, coming soon. Well, actually, I knew the deadline was coming soon, but, like, I didn't think it would register in-game because people have told me it hasn't, so. Okay, so let's go to February the 1st as we get closer to the deadline. Hopefully, we can lose some games because, like I said, I don't want this team to be a playoff team in year one. That just makes no sense. And literally, we're 21 and 17 and 5. What is this? 8 to 7 win over Montreal. What is this? This team should not be able to score that much goals. Like at the deadline, we could end up making uh, some trades to make us a better team to maybe make the playoffs, but I don't want to make the playoffs. I would rather get a good chance at like a top 5 pick. So we're probably going to be like trading away like Thomas Grice because he's probably the one that's simulating way too good right now. Unless Jonathan Bernier has picked it up. So we are almost near the end of the month. A third in Nemeth for a second. That's not a bad offer either. 
Considering we have Merc stall, huh? Might be something we look towards doing at the deadline. If Vancouver is willing to do it, then. Okay, so we're 25, 21, and five. How are we in standings wise? We're almost near the deadline. And let's see. Wait, where was it? We're literally just outside of a playoff spot. Somehow we're just below the Tampa Bay Lightning, which makes no sense. The simulation is really weird. Because Detroit won't even be a playoff team next year in real life. So we're going to sim up to this game against Minnesota. And that's where we're going to pretty much end the episode. I'm going to take a look at what's on the trading block for you guys. And we're going to adjust our trading block and stuff like that accordingly. Let's actually put Tom Turgeon back in the lineup down there. Henrik Zetterberg was actually getting the play. <laughs> That's weird. He had 10 points. I didn't realize he was actually in the lineup. Huh. I'll take him out, though, because he shouldn't be playing. Because it's unrealistic. We'll put in Dom Turgeon. There you go. But, yeah, I don't really want this team to make the playoffs. I don't know why they've been winning games. If somebody in our division like Ottawa has been just really bad, and Buffalo maybe too. No, Buffalo has been really good. But we're winning way too much, so we're going to probably have to make some moves to make our team worse. Edmonton wants Sam Gagne back for a sixth-round pick. Huh. I might be willing to do that at the deadline. Because, I mean, Gagne's got very low trade value, so a sixth-round pick is better than nothing. Okay, so we're nearly near that Minnesota game. And then we'll take a look at what's out there on the block. Surprisingly, there hasn't not been a single trade up to the deadline so far that's popped up at least. So no blockbuster deals yet. Okay, so 29, 27, and 5. How are we in terms of the standings quickly? We are just outside of a playoff spot by 8 points now. So we're kind of falling back a bit because our division has some strong powerhouses in it. Hmm, Okay. Let's take a look at what is out there on the trading block. Let me actually quickly track the draft class again just to see if there's been any updates to it. Uh, there actually is also a bug where the players don't, uh, like their points don't show up. So, Okay, so we're getting some scouting done. I don't know who this Kreutzer guy is. I don't think he's a real player. I could be completely wrong with that though. But uh, yeah, we're getting some good scouts. That wall guy, ooh, ooh. This wall guy might be somebody we want to go after if we drop down a lot. Because uh, I did get that comment that said to go for another defenseman. Well, Tristan Wall from Poland is an offensive medium elite defenseman. He's NHL ready. He looks really good and he's a gem. Yeah, that guy might be somebody we want to go after. He's projected to maybe go 8th overall, but it's his on the scout rank number 5. So hopefully we get at least a top 5 pick. I'm going to pin that guy. But our scouts are actually doing a pretty good job because I assigned them to the top guys and removed them from the later guys, but not too bad. Any other late round steals out of curiosity? Even though the draft is quite far away. Well, it's not super far, I guess. Typus might be a meme elite defensive defenseman. Huh, okay. Anyways, it's not about the draft. Let's get to the trading block. Let's see what we have on our trading block currently and adjust that. And then we'll take a look at what's out there on the block. And then you guys can suggest anything down below. So we had Nielsen and Nemeth on our block. We also got to add who else is old on this team. We could add Val Philpula. Oh, yeah, we got to add Grice for sure. So, yeah, let's add Thomas Grice to the block. Because somebody's definitely going to want a better goalie probably or a good backup maybe. Jonathan Bernier is only signed for one year. But we could trade him as well. How has he been simulating? Eh, not good. We could keep him in the lineup just because he's not been simming good. But Thomas Grice is really good at simulating. Like, it's almost like his real-life person, too. So, yeah, definitely getting rid of him. Defensively, anybody we want to get rid of? Mark Stahl has one year left. I don't think anybody's going to want him. Uh, Nemeth we already got on the block. Why can't I sign Phil Myers? It's so annoying. Uh, Bobby Ryan, how has he been simulating for us? 25 points. He might be somebody we want to put on the block. I don't know. Because he's kind of old. And he's not... Like, well, he's not a bad third-line option. 
Hmm. Then he could help a team with a playoff run. Nemesnikov has high trade value for some reason. He signed for two years, but he's only 28. Darren Helms got one year. Hmm. I might add some people that I only have one year. So I'll add Helm for fun. Just because he could help out another playoff team, probably. And it makes sense. Val Philpeel wouldn't be a bad option to do as well. Franz Nielsen, that's one. Two years left. Oh, actually, he was already there. Never mind. But we'll keep him on the bottom one for sure then. And do I want to put in... Yeah, I think I'm going to put in Val Philpeel. Because anybody that could help out a playoff team makes sense for us to move. So we'll do that. Surplus 28 to 50 is good. And we aren't going to be willing to move our second round picks. We're willing to move our third, I think, but not a first or a second. And in future picks, we're not going to be willing to give up a first or a second, just a third and a fourth. Anything to kind of sweeten the deal a bit for a computer. And then we want, we don't want anybody that's above 28 years old. That's something that I want to get rid of, so we'll just go any defenseman and we'll go 17 to 27 yeah that's good 17 to 27 and we'll do the same for forwards this episode might be a bit boring in comparison and except for those first few trades and I apologize for that just because it's a lot of micromanaging that we gotta do now and we'll also say any goalie as well just in case anybody wants to give us a goalie prospect because I don't know how Jan Bednar grows in this so Okay, so that's good. That's what we want on our block. Let's take a quick look at what's out there on the trading block and what we could potentially trade for at the deadline. And then you guys could suggest everything down below for the actual deadline itself. Because we're going to do the deadline mini game in next episode and rest of the regular season simulation. Hopefully we don't make the playoffs. So there's definitely some good prospects out there. So like Jack Opaka, Antoine Moran, BL Gruel, Braden Tracy... Kin drops not really anything. Now, what else we got here? Some veterans that I'm probably not wanting to trade for. I don't think Process at all is going to actually make the NHL. He's more of an AHL goalie. Uh, Boston's got some young guys, Senison and Frederick, Oscar Steen, and Jacob Zaboral, who's more of a bust, so not really anything there that I like at least. Buffalo has Stahl, Pozo, Egan. Lewis and Boyle, even though this team is a playoff team right now, I think. It's kind of strange that they will want to give up all those guys. Uh, Calgary has David Riddich, Ruzika, Peltier. Peltier is pretty solid as well. I had a Peltier in NHL 20 in my Montreal series. I wouldn't mind bringing him back. Uh, Marcus Phillips, Zav Zavgaron, the, I don't even pronounce that name. Yeah, Stelio Mateos, Ryan Suzuki. Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of young guys. Zion Ibeck, Noel Gunler. There's definitely options out there if we want to trade for young prospects, but I don't know if we have the most traded value for them. Connor Timmins isn't that bad either. He might be one of those guys that actually step up to the NHL next season, so maybe we want to trade for somebody like him. Bowen Byram's no longer on the block, which is kind of interesting. Columbus has some good assets that would help with a playoff run. Like, Merzlikens would be a solid goalie to bring in, but I don't want to simulate too well. Um, Jason Robertson is somebody I was actually kind of interested in bringing in. I just don't know what we could give up to get him. So we might look to get him at the deadline. I don't know. Um, what else do we got here? Ryan McLeod, Philip Broberg, Stuart Skinner. Yeah, so there's definitely some good young guys out there. If you guys see anybody down below, or anybody here that you want me to get, let me know down below. And I might trade for them in the next episode. Because I like doing your guys' suggestions over what I do, because it just it makes it a bit better of an experience. So, Kale Fleury is also a decent option to go for. And Caden Gooley. I don't know why Montreal wants to get rid of defense, but okay. Uh, Bailey, Eberle, Nelson, pretty much all veterans. Kreider and Johnson, I don't want Jack Johnson still on the block. Eon Ruda, just a bunch of picks in New Jersey. Barely anything in Ottawa. Nolan Patrick is still unsigned. Mar uh, Morgan Frost is uh, signed for two years. He wouldn't be a bad person to bring in. 
Isaac Ratcliffe, German Rubstov, so a couple young guys. Yeah, there's definitely some good things that we could go after. San Jose going into full rebuild, getting rid of all these guys are trying to. St. Louis has some young options as well. Tampa Bay. Yeah, there is a lot of players out there. Ilya Mikheyev, who actually signed recently in real life. Dermot as well. Liljegren. Okay. Hoglander is not too bad. Paul Moo. Jet Wu. Flurry of Lazician. Uh, Jake Lazician looks actually kind of a lot like his father, and it's kind of weird. Peyton Krebs wouldn't be that bad, but he's got a lot of value, probably. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for what's on the block. But if you guys see anything in here that you want me to go for, let me know. Okay, so that is the trading block, and I think that's almost all we're going to do in this episode. Let me take a quick look at our player stats this season, just to kind of give you guys a sense of who's been actually performing and who hasn't been so we could potentially trade away the guys that aren't playing that well. So Larkin and Bertuzzi have been really good. Same with Mantha, which is to be expected. Fabry's been pretty good. Zadina has been pretty good. Nemesnikov has been pretty good. The rest of them have been pretty quiet. Our defense hasn't been performing too well. But Ethan Bear's a plus 18 since he's been signed. He's got 14 points, so he's been really good. Mort Sider's got 17 points. So I'm really liking that pairing of those two. And yeah, Luke Lindenny's also another person that we could potentially move out. But I don't know if he's going to get any offers from him because he's probably got really low value. And in our goaltending situation has been kind of interesting. Grice has been really well and are playing really well and Bernier has been really bad. Okay, so anyways guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. So in next episode, we will have the trade deadline minigame. And then we will sim the rest of the regular season and kind of get set for our off season probably because I don't think this team's a playoff team. And hopefully we can get some good prospects in that draft coming up in the next couple episodes. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys next time.